Hi, I'm Dave Young. I want to share something with you that's very special to me. To do it, I want to tell you right away, go to the KC Base Fest website and find the PDF there that I have left. I have analyzed the prelude to the suite number four of Bach and uh, put it there so we can all look at it together. So while I'm talking, go to the website and see if you can find that music and call it up. And while some of us do that, I want to tell you why I did this. I took a theory course this year to kind of refresh myself uh, about the uh, what makes some of the music we revere so much so great. And of course, Bach comes to mind right away. And it came to me that the Bach uh, Sweet Four Prelude is a perfect candidate for this because it is actually not that complex compared to what happens later, but it is terribly interesting. And Bach is very sure what he's doing. And he's in fact doing things harmonically that I thought were not common until much later. And here Bach, well, I want to share this with you. Let's, I'm hoping you have that music in front of you. I want to take off together. Bach is going to lead us by the hand and sometimes we're going to go into the woods and only he will know the way, but believe me, he knows the way. Let's talk about, let's go with him, let's talk about the world, the harmony world that he inhabits. Here is the beginning of the piece. Look at the Roman numerals underneath. You see, I made a kind of piano part. I actually organized the notes so that they're in a consistent chordal manner so you can see. Uh, I mean, writing an analysis like this teases out the notes that are uh, maybe fundamentals to the chord, but aren't always on the bottom. And uh, what he's doing in the arpeggios is interesting on t and, uh, in itself. But here I'm looking at the harmonies. So this piano part I've made is just to play the chords so you can hear them. But also it shows you what the bass notes implied in these chords are. Well, yes, we played in the key of D, so everything is D for eight bars. But look at the chords. We go one, four, five, just like every folk song and a half of the rock and roll tunes every ever written use the same thing, one, four, five. Well, Bach could have had a very nice, thank you very much, nice little piece that everybody knows, the harmony, but he immediately starts going off from there. And to show you what he does, I want you to concentrate upon the left hand of the piano line, the bass line, because in this case, a lot of the time, the bass is carrying the important melody. Sometimes there are counter melodies, and you can make a case for two, even three melodies going on at the same time. But for this purpose, I want to concentrate on what the left hand, what the implied bass is doing. So right away, here we are, we were in bar nine, we return to the D chord, watch what the bass does. went to an A chord. That's certainly not G, but also he did it by adding a G sharp, which pushes us like a dominant to a new tonic. Okay, that's very common in that era, and we know the sound of that. Well, he's hardly done. Watch the bass line. It uses the same kind of sequence, and the bass line descends to a new place. <laughs> He goes to a G chord. Now this could be the key of G, he could stay there, or he could keep sequences. Well, 
watch, of course he goes, he keeps the bass line descending again. Okay. Okay, I want you to see and notice an amazing device, which is very common already by Bach's time, and everybody since Bach has used it as a major device for pivoting. It's called a diminished seventh. A diminished seventh, look at bar 21. A diminished seventh consists of four notes, each of them a minor third apart, and it requires altering some note or more of the scale. In this case, he added an A sharp in bar 21, an A sharp again in 23 and 25. Each of those are diminished seventh chords. And because of that A sharp, we go, we're pushed in 27 to B minor. We could be in the key of B minor. Let's see what he does. Look at this. He adds D sharp, and he goes down in the bass line. Now I want to stop. This diminished seventh chord is actually pushing us to E minor, but now Bach, I think, is doing something fun. I think, no, this is not an A2. This is not dry. I think he's teasing us. Each time he goes to a new what could be a key point, a new key, and he doesn't stay there. He immediately leaves it. Well, here's a diminished seventh again, and I think this diminished that a minute ago we were on, we went on D sharp, took us to E. Well, this is the same D sharp in a different guise takes us to E minor, and we think, well, is this it? Is this where we're staying? <laughs> Okay, this time we went to F sharp minor. And again, it's because of those E sharps pushing us to F sharp. Now, here's a, he uh, gets, gives you a kind of a uh, break in a second from all these arpeggios, but he's still teasing us. He knows the wave and we're on, we could be feeling lost, but he has us by the hand. He says, don't worry, I'll show you. Okay, this is an, another device and a moment in Bach, which is very common. You remember he was an organist, and there are these uh, long things called organ preludes. They are often improvised. The idea here is right in the music. Look ahead of where we are. We're right now in bar 52. And look, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, all the way to 61. All of these bars with one exception temporarily. All are based with a C-sharp foundation. This is called a pedal tone. And all the improvisatory sound above it and those scales coming up, all is to set up a pedal, which is a tension moment. And finally, it gives way and arrives at 62 to F-sharp minor. <laughs> sharp minor. Well, what devices are left for him to play with? Oh, don't worry. He's not out of ideas at all. 
Now, we've seen so many descending baselines. It feels, I think, just right. We've had enough. And Bach says, oh, don't you worry. We're going to now go up. In a second, you're going to see the baseline start rising. And in music, rising pitch always means adding tension. And this is no exception. Watch the bass line go up with the, uh, dim, uh, our diminished seventh arpeggios, and it'll get, uh, get up to the top of page four to another su um, surprising device. Here is 62. <laughs> device which is extremely common and so so cool how he uses it this is a d minor chord but it's got an a on the bottom it's called a one six four position and it sets up a resolution but we're not sure where it just is going somewhere nearby it's not the resolution well what it does is it sets up an amazing moment an explosion of musical meaning in bar 80 Look at the notes, E flat, G, B flat. What is an E flat chord doing in the key of D or anything near the key of D? This is a device called a Neapolitan sixth, which you'll come across in your studies. It's a very common device later. I thought it wasn't common until 50 years later. Here, what do I know? Here's Bach demonstrating. He knew exactly what he's doing. I think to the ears of his time, this is really an explosion, but he really uses it perfectly and with great skill. He makes the biggest tension, which allows for the greatest resolution. And in 82, you'll see we're back in the key of D. E flat. end of the piece is like, ah, we're out of the woods and you can see home in the distance. We're right there with a little flourish in 88 and an improvised sounding moment. We come down the scale and it's like, we're home. Amazing. So I hope you like this piece as much as I do. I'd like to play the whole thing for you now.